Network presents Football Time. Welcome to the Football Time Show. We're here for week 11 of the college football season. It's winding down pretty quickly here. College basketball has already tipped off. So uh, we're coming to an end here. Interesting end. Last week, uh, a lot of close games by Mm -hmm. a lot of the top teams, but uh, everybody seemed to sort of squeak by there, except for Michigan State, who uh, dropped it uh, to Purdue. I don't know if that was too much of a surprise. Maybe a little bit of one there. Uh, But Purdue has uh, been a solid defensive team. Michigan State has sort of lived on that edge uh, pretty much all season long, and uh, that edge dropped a little bit there. But uh, a really interesting week. Week 10 overall, uh, I thought, uh, as everybody seemed to tighten up uh, a little bit. I I think we've talked about that in the previous weeks. All right, so let's get into the rankings here. Uh, Pretty much everything they're saying, except Ohio State moves up uh, into that top four. Um, Oregon, now number three. Uh, Michigan State somehow drops uh, below Michigan, though they uh, played, uh, I think, 10 days ago, and uh, Michigan State got that win. Not quite sure how that works out. Oklahoma still sitting on the uh, outside there as a uh, 9-0, nine, nine and oh, but uh, in that eight spot, Notre Dame uh, at 8-1 and one in uh, that nine spot, still Hovering in there, uh, I think if things uh, break uh, weirdly enough, uh, maybe they can move up. They would have to jump that Cincinnati uh, spot who uh, sits there well, at number five. So what do you think of these rankings? I, here's the thing, though, is I don't think Cincinnati's going to go anywhere. Uh, I think they're about as high as they can go because um, if any of these teams above them lose, I think these teams behind them are going to jump them. Um, <clears throat> Oklahoma, I think they're hanging back, but, you know, They've got a lot of good big games coming yes. up. Uh, if they take care of business of those games, I fully expect Oklahoma to move up these rankings pretty quick. Um, and you know, in Oklahoma State, even they, with even with their loss, they've still got some more opportunity to get some bigger wins. Um, but I, I don't think Cincinnati's going to prove prove anybody wrong this year. And I think their five is probably about as high as they can go. And that's if they went out. They continue yeah. to have close game after yes. close game. So that's another thing we talked about. The eye test for Cincinnati is rough. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I like it. I was surprised Michigan State dropped that one to Purdue. Uh, I think you called it. I did, yes. I did not. Uh, really confused by Michigan being ahead of them. Um, but I like Oregon. I like Bama. And I like, I'm actually happy with the top four. Again, I've, I've been pleased with the committee this year so far. Yeah. Uh, th- that's a weird jump. It, it, you know, but once again, it doesn't really factor because Michigan State plays Ohio State. So well, it, if they go in there and beat them, then it all solves itself out. It, it's more a looks thing. It looks stupid that you have a game that you just played 10 days ago and then you jump a team over another team who will both have the same record they played and lost head to head there. Well, here's the thing. You know, these rankings are really just arbitrary right now anyway yes. because the whole season has to get yes. played out. And and so I really think they're just putting these out there as a fan service and as some give something. It's you a know, fun TV show for some people. I don't think I ever watch it. Makes good content for podcasts as well. <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, uh, so I think it gives it gives something uh, for people to talk about. But it's really irrelevant until we get to the end of the season. Yeah. And all the games are played out anyway. Like I said, Oklahoma at eight. Yeah, people get up in arms about it. But in the end, if they take care of business, it doesn't really matter. They're going to be in the top four if they win out. Yeah. Uh, You know, the thing with Cincinnati, uh, before we move on to our games of the week this week, you know, they do probably have, other than Oregon, the best win of the whole group. They have a win at Notre Dame, whose only loss is that game. So, you know, right now of teams who have top ten wins, it's pretty much Oregon. Michigan State and Cincinnati. So, you know, they aren't doing themselves a whole lot of favors by that Tulsa game, uh, which, you know, in high insight, they probably should have lost. That Indiana game was a little shaky. Now the score makes it look a little bit there. Uh, but, you know, they do play SMU. We'll see how that goes. Uh, then probably a championship game with uh, Houston, who seems to <laughs> find their way uh, through the season. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So, you know... I do think uh, Cincinnati is at least there, uh, but I, I don't think you can downgrade them for having a close game. And then you have Alabama, who played a LSU team who's shown no life. Yeah. They have a close game. Ohio State has a you know close game. 
everybody's having close games, uh, you know, to close out this year. So I don't think you can judge them just because it's, uh, you know, a, a tight game that maybe uh, if a certain thing breaks, you start dropping around the rankings. If you remember, Tulsa went into Ohio State, yeah. and that was a relatively close game too. Uh, that's my big Tulsa's only two <laughs> close games all season long, but uh, something about going to the state of Ohio. All right, so let's move past the uh, rankings and get into our games of the week. Let's start out at the noon game, the big one in the Big Ten. Michigan goes to Penn State. Can you still call this a big one? Uh, d- it's pretty big still, I think. Uh, you know, Penn State has uh, hurt uh, that a little bit. Uh, but anyway, one-point favorite uh, for Michigan here going into Penn State. I'm curious your thoughts on this game. Uh, Penn State's defense, probably the toughest that yep. Michigan will have seen all year long. It's probably a question what you think this Penn State offense is going to do because uh, it's been bad at the quarterback play. Uh, for some reason, the Running game has regressed, and uh, I, I don't know what it is. So is there enough offense on the Penn State side to uh, pull an upset here versus Michigan? Well, you hit the nail on the head. That's the biggest question of this game because Penn State, they you know, in their losses here recently, their the run game has been shut down, so they've had to rely on their passing game, which is also virtually non-existent. It's never really been good this year. So, um, Even when the quarterback was healthy. Yeah, so I, I think that lack of run game – run game and versatility, you know, they're very one-dimensional right now, and that's really not helping them. Uh, You know, Michigan, they've been a little inconsistent at times, but they can still run the ball pretty well. Uh, You know, this is going to be a really ugly Big Ten game, uh, but I'd have to lean to Michigan, uh, and I just think that uh, uh, Penn State, they've lost a lot of momentum. They've lost a lot of games here, Uh, maybe even moving on from their coach. We'll see. We'll see who comes to call in for James Franklin. It could be a mutual – Parting of the yeah, ways. Yeah, parting of the ways uh, just because he hasn't quite broken through at Penn State the way they'd like. Um, so I, I don't see Penn State coming out really fired up for this. And, and Michigan's still got a lot to play for. They're still right there on the edge uh, and and can still potentially win the Big Ten. Um, so I, I like Michigan here. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm leaning a little Penn State here, and I'm leaning Penn State uh, based on, like, history here. Uh, Michigan has really, really struggled going into Penn State. Yeah. Five of the last six they have lost uh, to Penn State. Uh, they've lost two straight to Penn State. So, you know, and, and we aren't talking about great Penn State teams here. Uh, that one last year where Michigan lost uh, was a very, very bad Penn State team. Now, granted, it was a bad Michigan team too. So, you know, it, it's really hard to sort of – just find that line, how much does a game, you know, five or six years ago in Penn State really factor mm-hmm. other than you're seeing that Michigan Harbaugh has struggled going into Penn State. Both Franklin and uh, Harbaugh have been there enough. So I, I do play that in. I've seen Michigan struggle here. No, it's how much do you read into those, you know, past performances? How much is Michigan State this season going to struggle going into Penn State uh, based on history uh, of these two teams uh, going there. So I, I'm going to play that and just say Michigan has struggled going into Penn State. It seems to be a trend that Harbaugh struggles in this these games. Uh, it's probably not really uh, that big a thing, but Penn State probably has the two best wins in the Big Ten if you look at it. They have that win over uh, Wisconsin, yeah. you know, and uh, they have a win over Auburn. So, you know, as weird as it seems, yes, that uh, loss to Illinois is staring you uh, very boldly in the face. Uh, but, you know, they they have managed to win a couple big games here. So, you know, one of them was early in the season, but uh, you just sort of see where it was. Wisconsin probably wasn't the Wisconsin that they are now. Uh, you know, Auburn you know, probably is still the Auburn that you never know what you're going to get. So I give that one a little more credence than the Wisconsin one, but Mm -hmm. uh, definitely think this will be an interesting game. Uh, Definitely how we're on the two different sides. You think Michigan's a better team here? Ignore the past history. I'm just going past history on Michigan and uh, knowing that they've struggled in these type of games. Let's move on to an interesting one in the Big 12. Uh, Oklahoma, Baylor. Oklahoma sits at 9-0, coming off a bye. Baylor coming off that uh, tough loss to TCU. Uh, They found a little uh, mojo with a new quarterback in there, and uh, Baylor couldn't quite defend uh, last week. I I don't know how much of that was just sort of aberration 
how much of that is more Baylor coming sort of back down to where we thought they were. Uh, but uh, going into Baylor, Oklahoma, five-and-a-half-point favorites here. What's your feel on this game? I think that line's perfect. Um, I, I'm disappointed in Baylor. I had him last week. Um, they got off to a slow start in the game and couldn't claw their way yeah. back into it. Uh, almost almost got there. Um, but I still don't have enough, a whole lot of faith in this Oklahoma team. Uh, they've yet to really come out and just completely dominate a game. Um, now that bye week may help Are them. we counting Texas Tech as dominating a game? <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. We'll move past that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just, you know, I think this bye week is probably a really good Good time for them, uh, especially coming into the tougher part of their schedule. Uh, they've got the new quarterback in there. They were probably able to get some really good reps yeah. with him and uh, and figure out exactly where they're going to go. So I'd, I'd probably have to lean Oklahoma here. I think, uh, you know, Baylor had some mojo on that streak, uh, but now that their chances of winning the conference are probably uh, slim to none, uh, they might not be uh, uh, as hyped up for this game. Now, it is in Baylor, uh, but – like I said, Oklahoma may find their groove, uh, especially with that bye week coming in beforehand. Yeah. Uh, I, what would make me nervous about taking Baylor in this was that off week uh, for Oklahoma. To yeah. have that bye week, yeah. Caleb gets a real full set of reps there, um, you know, and uh, – He's looked good, and the Oklahoma offense has looked much, much better since, you know, he's taken over. Kansas game, outlier, but uh, other than that, uh, the offense has looked more like a a Lincoln Riley and Oklahoma offense the previous years uh, with him at the helm. That would make me a little nervous, especially with the defensive struggles. The first time we sort of saw that with Baylor uh, this year, uh, last week versus TCU, which basically TCU runs the same offense as Oklahoma, except with uh, better players and uh, more efficiently uh, for the most part. So that would make me a little nervous, but uh, I'm just not going to cross off Baylor uh, just yet. So I, I don't think there's a probably really a good play on this side. I guess you could go ride that uh, bye week for Oklahoma and maybe play that five and a half. But uh, from what we've seen from them, you can't trust that. I think this line would have to move at least two points before I really yeah. had a play here. Yeah, definitely so. It, in either direction. If it dropped about yeah, three and a exactly. half Oklahoma, I'd lean more that way. If it dropped up to about a touchdown and a half off that key number, probably ride Baylor. It, it just seems in a in a no-win zone mm-hmm. taking either side here in this one. Because, uh, you know, maybe that TCU-Baylor game, which is a big rivalry game too, yeah. uh, you know, you might cross that off. And uh, maybe Baylor plays here, and uh, Oklahoma finally gets sort of that uh, loss that they've been trying to <laughs> get all season long uh, to close out this schedule. They really have a tough, you know, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Next up, SEC, big matchup, Mississippi State, Auburn. Auburn coming off, uh, uh, I don't know what to call that AM and game. Uh, uh, not a fun watch would uh, be my uh, interpretation of that one. Mississippi State, tough loss to Arkansas. Uh, I think we've been saying this all, all season long. Probably should have won that game. Uh, sort of dominated that game, but uh, yet somehow found a way to lose that game. Uh, but uh, I, I think if we said Mississippi State would be 5-4 and four with a win at A&M uh, this season, we'd say it's a pretty successful season for Mississippi State. Uh, so they go to Auburn, 5.5 points for Auburn. How do you see this game playing out here? Uh, I see this, you know, this could be very similar to both of these teams Last week, yeah. you know, it's almost like you can, you can, if you take the names off of these teams, it's like, hey, didn't these guys play last week? Yeah. Um, I think uh, Auburn's not quite as strong defensively uh, as A&M is, so Mississippi State may be able to find a little bit more points in this one. And I, 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 I sorry, Auburn played A&M. Yes. Again, <laughs> see, mixing teams up. But anyway, um, I, I, I like Mississippi State getting points here. You know, they yes. kept it close last week. Uh, I think they match up really well against Auburn. They're going to make this game uh, uh, ugly. Uh, and defensively, I think they can shut Auburn down, especially in the run game. Mississippi yeah. State's really good against the run. Um, so I think it's going to be close. I love Mississippi State getting here point, getting points here. Uh, they keep getting points in these close matchups. Yeah. And uh, you took them last week. They keep uh, covering. Yeah, uh, so I, I, I like it again. I think it was five and a half last week, five and a half again this week. Uh, Mississippi State's definitely a good play. Yeah, um, I, I didn't put them on my picks this week just because I, I pretty much burned them for, I don't know, <laughs> the, the last eight games of the uh, season. And I'm just like, at some point, 
they're probably going to get blown out, but really I don't think they are, and I think this line is once again off, much like the Arkansas line. I think we could probably guarantee this game's going to be close and come down to one team making, you know, a bad field goal miss or a bad, you know, red zone uh, entry in there and not getting points that they deserve. Uh, you know, once again we saw that Auburn offense – uh, just sputter uh, versus the A and M defense. Uh, you know Mississippi State's defense always good, always able to create turnovers, which has caused Auburn trouble in the past. It's whether Mississippi State can convert their opportunities. Yep. They have the yards, and uh, they might be one of the worst red zone teams I've ever seen, That's true. <laughs> including missing a twenty yard field goal uh, last week amongst the three others that they missed in there. So. You know, I, I think the play is still Mississippi State. And, you know, by Saturday, they might end up in, back in my picks list. I just, you know, you get fatigued taking them week after week and then winning with them week after week. I, I You know, they've probably been my most profitable team all season long. And I'm just like, how long are you going to ride the ship before you get that L? You don't want that L. So I, I didn't put them on my picks this week. But I, I definitely think the play here is Mississippi State, especially since – we don't totally know what we're going to get from Auburn. We yeah. know what we're getting from Mississippi State. Uh, they just sort of haven't closed out the games, but it, they they could just as easily be a, a, a nice you know seven and two mm-hmm. uh, as to a, a five and four here. So interesting game. Uh, Probably a little bit tough to go into Jordan Hare, uh, but I I think the noon game probably pulls that back and doesn't give quite the you know home field advantage oh, yeah. as a you know a, a seven eight o'clock start would. Uh, let's move on to the big one in the Big Ten, uh, Purdue the. Uh, Beaters of top five teams. Uh, I don't know if we still count Iowa as a top five team, uh, but uh, certainly ESPN likes to throw up the graphic of Iowa as like three when they beat them. Uh, you know, the fact that I don't think they've won a game since, not factoring too much in there. But uh, anyway, Purdue goes to Ohio State. Interesting matchup here. Ohio State 20 and a half point favorites. I think the question is, uh, can Purdue create the offense Mm -hmm. uh, to put this uh, there? Because they probably will have to play it a lot like Oregon did. Get into that 30 range, control the ball. I I do think that pass rush can get to Ohio State. You saw it last week in the Ohio State game. They struggled, uh, uh, you know, with Penn State's pass rush. They managed to get enough, uh, but, you know, the offense sputtered. They're really bad in the red zone, almost as bad as Mississippi State. Can Purdue pull off another big upset? If you looked at games in the past, too, Purdue has always played uh, Ohio State pretty tough. So, uh, interesting matchup here. Yeah, I don't know if Purdue can keep the magic going, but uh, I think they can definitely keep it going for 20 and a half. Yeah. Uh, I, I like the spread here, uh, but going into Col- uh, Columbus, I, I just don't know. And Ohio State, you know, they've, they've got their offense going pretty well. Uh, they had a Good receiver out last week. They just find another receiver. It's yeah. next man up. They've got a lot of talent on that team. Uh, probably more talent than either of the other top ten up uh, top ten teams that Purdue yes. has beaten yet. This is the most talented team, uh, and it going to Ohio State. I just don't know if they can keep the magic rolling again yeah. this week. A uh, couple of things on the Purdue side. They do get that big time receiver back, uh, who they uh, has been out since about the Notre Dame game. I think that will help their offense a little bit. And, you know, we mentioned Ohio State's struggles on offense. If you look at the sort of splits between when they play really, really poor teams, which they've done for about a four-game stretch before that Penn State game, they dominate on offense. But every time they've matched up against what you'd call a solid defensive, uh, higher-ranked team, they've really sort of struggled on offense. So, you know, I I do think that 20-and-a-half, Probably a pretty good play. Uh, I know it's weird to say, but Purdue is a, a defensive-based team. Uh, you know, you don't think of them like that. You think of Drew Brees and Joe Tiller throwing uh, 700 times yeah. a game. Uh, but this one's sort of reversed. Really good pass rush out of Purdue. So it'll be interesting to see this. I think the 20 and a half is the only play. I, I don't see how you could convince yourself to play the 20 and a half on, on the Ohio State side. It, no. It's probably a 20 and a half play or sort of let this game pass. Uh, Maybe you throw a a, a little 
a smidgen on that uh, 700 money line. Though I, I think that's it probably should be a little bit higher before I really grab the 7-1. to one. But uh, I, I think that'll definitely be an interesting game. Uh, speaking of interesting games, and uh, we're going uh, good on one side of the ball, good on the other side of the ball. How will this play out? SEC matchup, Georgia-Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee sitting at 5-4. and four. Big yeah. win over Kentucky. Uh, I still don't think anyone has stopped anyone on that one. Uh, but uh, Georgia's defense comes in here. Can they slow down the balls? Big, big line. I, I thought this was a little bit bigger than I thought. Uh, but this one also is at 20 and a half. Georgia has t- traditionally struggled with Tennessee yeah. uh, throughout the years. So uh, what do you make of Georgia going into Tennessee here? Uh, I think it's going to be closer than what the spread indicates. Um I, I think I do think Tennessee could be right up there with the most points scored on Georgia. I look, you know, their defense. Yeah, their front is probably the best front we've seen in, out of any, you know, or is just as good as you know the 2011 Bama or, yeah. the, or the you know LSU team from back then as well. Um, but uh, you could throw on this Georgia team a little bit, and you just you just got to keep your composure. You can't let this this defense uh, rattle you. You know, we saw that. Uh, uh, I believe it was the Kentucky game yeah. uh, where they just you know blocked a punt early and just jumped on them, and then there was no crawling back. So Georgia's going to want to come in; they're going to want to put this game away quick. Uh, uh, but you know Tennessee, they've got that big play factor. I think more big plays than any other team in the country. Um, so that's you know that's a recipe for an upset. I don't think uh, they've got quite enough defensively. Uh, I think Georgia could hand the ball off every play and, and get enough done on the offensive side to 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 at least match Tennessee. Um, but <sighs> Tennessee's got to avoid the big, costly, like, turnovers or sack fumbles, that kind of stuff. Um, but, yeah, another – just like this last game, I think 20-and-a-half is a little inflated. Yeah. And uh, I like playing that that line there. Yeah, I, I think 20-and-a-half is a, uh, inflated as well. Um, you know, Georgia has not played an offense like this, and – it will be very, very interesting to see how Georgia deals uh, with that kind of, uh, you know, offensive firepower that's going to come off the Tennessee, you know, side of the ball. Now, uh, can Tennessee get stops? <laughs> that's a, a very large question because a Kentucky team who has no offense, uh, you know, thrashed them. I think that would be the scary part yeah. is if Georgia, you know, gets a player to gets up on them. They probably don't have a way back into the game. Uh, but I, I am very curious how this, you know, Georgia defense matches up against a, a true offense, their first true offense that they're facing really this season. Uh, you know, it, it's probably Auburn who might be the best offense they've played so far this season. So I, I think this will be the first real, real trust uh, for this uh, Georgia Bulldogs team. So I, I think that 20 and a half numbers pretty inflated. Uh, once again, same thing on the Purdue, the money line at 750. It doesn't seem like it. I, I, I It does intrigue me a little bit because Georgia has struggled so much playing Tennessee throughout the history, but we go back to how much does that factor, you know, uh, from old Georgia Bulldog teams to this one right here, yeah. and how you know, much does the old Tennessee teams factor <laughs> to this one right here. You're just sort of playing, you know, a little bit of history here that Georgia has traditionally struggled in Tennessee in this game. It's traditionally been close, no matter sort of the talent on, on both sides of the field. That goes for either way. When Tennessee's had more talent than Georgia, game still somehow always seems yeah. to be close. So I, I think the 20-and-a-half number, probably a good one to play here, I, see if Georgia's uh, defense can uh, shut that down. Yeah, I think this game could go really – I think it could be a blowout in Georgia's favor or really close, but Georgia still finds a way to win. They're going to need to take Tennessee and the crowd out of it yeah. as fast as they can because it's going to be a crazy environment, I think. Uh, you know, 3.30 game. First time really Tennessee's been, you know, a standout game yeah. on television. Uh, and uh, you're just going to have to really just, you know, slit the throat quick uh, yeah. if you're Georgia here. Definitely so. All right, uh, we'll go Minnesota, Iowa, and uh, the sort of three way race in that side of the yeah. uh, Big Ten. Uh, I, I think Iowa got a uh, uh, sort of needed uh, bye week after a, a tough stretch there. Uh, Minnesota, uh, once again, losing to a. a <laughs> interesting uh, team last week. Uh, same score as Bowling Green. Um, what do you make of this matchup? Can Iowa sort of 
rewrite the ship here, or is uh, Minnesota going to come in there and uh, be able to run the ball? It, it, it seems hard for me, as much as I've disliked Minnesota this year, they don't sort of throw it enough for yeah. Iowa to create those turnovers, and it, it seems the last three or four games when Iowa hasn't gotten those turnovers, they've just been mauled. So if Minnesota doesn't turn the ball over, is Iowa capable of winning here? Five and a half point spread. Uh, but where do you go with Minnesota? Uh, four really good games, uh, one tough played game versus Ohio State, and three really bad games. So uh, it's sort of a slot machine on what's coming yeah, up on this, that one. This one's a big red stay away from yeah. me. Yeah. Um, I think it could be a first to ten points. Yeah, when this wins this game, uh, you know, you look at that over under is sitting at a thirty seven and a half. That means Vegas doesn't think there's going to be much scoring here, either. Um, you know, if if good Minnesota shows up, I think they're every bit as capable of of beating this Iowa team. If if you know from what we've seen, you know that Minnesota against Nebraska looks yes. really good. If that Minnesota shows up, I think they can beat Iowa. Uh, but you know, we could we saw Minnesota lose to Illinois last week, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I, I, but it's like you said, Iowa doesn't really have much offensively. Yes. Uh, so uh, it, I, I don't think they can cover that five and a half. Uh, I think if you make a play here, it's Minnesota. But you know, you could get Minnesota losing to Bowling Green show up as well. So, yes. <laughs> like you said, you're you're playing the slots here, and I I tend to try to make picks where I at least have somewhat of an edge. Yeah. Uh, I, this was very quick cross off just X because. I, I don't know what I'm getting from Iowa. I, I think coming off that bye week, we're probably going to get a very, very conservative Iowa. They sort of tried to throw those last couple weeks with Pease. He started creating turnovers. I don't know what sort of turnovers we're getting with uh, you know, uh, Minnesota and their ability to run the ball. They literally did not do anything in that Illinois game. Yeah. And uh, I, I think Iowa's defense is... Uh, much, much better than Illinois, though. Illinois showed a, a little bit of pride there. So this is just a, I don't know what's going to happen here. Uh, and, and that number sits in the uh, zone of I don't know what way to <laughs> lean here because five and a half just qu- isn't never quite enough points in a game. And uh, five and a half minus just always seems like too many points. Yeah. So uh, just an interesting game to see how this plays out. I, I think Wisconsin's probably uh, taking control of this side, but uh, I, I don't think we always know what Wisconsin's coming. They seem to have found their running game. Their defense has been great all season long, uh, but uh, if that running game goes away, what you know, I, I, Wisconsin could very well lose another one, and one of these two teams uh, could be in there. The only thing I know is Northwestern's probably not going to <laughs> uh, be in the uh, aforementioned group in that one. All right, we'll go to an ACC game, and uh, you know, a rivalry game that. Uh, has a little bit of mojo. Uh, Florida State sort of found a nice little rhythm there. Miami uh, found their offense. Uh, defense uh, still lacking a little bit, but uh, they seem to have found their rhythm on offense. They still have a shot at the uh, ACC uh, championship game. So uh, two and a half point favorites here for Miami. Can they get it done here versus Florida State, or uh, can Florida State uh, continue their sort of uh, better play week to week? Yeah, I you know, this is you know you look at it on on both of these teams. You know, Miami really disappointing. Everybody thought they were going to break through this year with Garrett King, who's you know missed half the season and, and is out. And everyone thought Miami was going to be back. And Florida State, not a whole a lot of people really expected much out of Florida State no. this year. Uh, and while they really haven't delivered much, I think uh, here in the last few weeks they've been. They've been showing a little bit more fight. Uh, they 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 got some wins under their belt. I think they're right at about their what their over under win total was yes. on the season. Um, but I think for Florida State, this game is their season. Uh, if they can win uh, either this big rivalry or even the one against Florida, they've got those those two big rivalry games. Uh, so yeah, their season as far as you know bowl games and and stuff like that, which I guess a bowl game is still technically within reach. Uh, I think they're going to be leaving it all on the field in this one. So. Uh, I don't quite trust the Miami minus the two and a half here, and and with it being uh, in Tallahassee, you know that's a that's a wild crowd. Um, 
I don't know how many people will be there, but I think they're going to be there for this rivalry. Yeah. I, I don't think I'd uh, touch the two and a half for Miami. Uh, you might give me a little play on that minus 135 money line. It seems a little bit safer than taking those points. Because mm-hmm. uh, if you've watched Miami's game for the last uh, five they or six. They do just enough. Uh, it, it, it's always coming down to who has the ball last. Uh, so, I, you know, it, it's really hard to sort of judge this game because I, I think if you ask what the best uh, sort of uh, set on the field, it's probably Miami's offense. Uh, it's looked really, really good since Van Dyke has taken over for, you know, De'Ara King. Uh, they've gotten explosive plays. Their running game has found a home. Uh, you know, Florida State's defense has been much, much better than it was at the start of the season. Is it good enough to, you know, sort of handle this kind of offense? You know, the last time we saw it handle like a wake style offense, which essentially what Miami's become, yeah. um, it, it wasn't great. So, you know, you have that, but it's a huge rivalry game. It's in Doak, so that's always a tough place to play. I don't think the two and a half is enough for me to take Florida State either. I, I think the only play would maybe be Miami money line, but overall, I, I'd probably stay away from this. Uh, other than Miami has a shown a lot of life and you know they're a couple field goals away from having you know two more wins uh, in the Carolina and Virginia games that they uh, managed to you know lose there so you know I I think Miami has the momentum but uh, you sort of throw that out in this type of rivalry game especially on a road side of things but uh, I am curious to uh, to see how this game plays out interesting total number at 60 and a half too Uh, you know it's I think if Miami gets their style of game, this thing goes way, way over. Oh, yeah. And if Florida State gets their style of game, this way, is probably way, way, way under. So a uh, little bit of interesting to see how this uh, sort of plays out here. But uh, I, I think it'll be an entertaining game uh, oh, yeah. for sure. So uh, uh, maybe not the biggest game of the week, but uh, I think an entertaining one uh, nonetheless. All right, uh, let's go to Michigan State, the aforementioned team that lost to Purdue we talked about. Uh they have Maryland coming into town here, 12.5-point favorites. Uh, Maryland, uh, very good at passing the ball. Michigan State, very bad at uh, defending the pass. So I think that's a little bit of an interesting matchup. Uh, but Maryland also uh, tends to turn the ball over a lot uh, and also can defend the run or the pass. So uh, yeah. 12.5 here. What do you make of this game here? You know, I've looked at this one about two or three times. I'm trying to talk myself into Maryland. Uh, just because, you know, 12 and a half is a lot, and, and Michigan State doesn't seem to really blow anybody yeah. out. Um, but if you're going to blow anybody out, it's going to be in Maryland. Um, so, uh, like I said, I, I've looked, I'm, I'm trying to talk myself into Maryland, uh, but I, I just don't think I'm uh, confident in their defense uh, really to control the, a, a more talented Michigan State. Yes. Team. I, I think this is where the metrics kill me. And I, I look at like Maryland's metrics and their, you know, yards per play and their explosiveness on offense. I, I get obsessed with and I just sort of fall in love with this team. I don't know how many times I'm going to lose money on them, uh, but it's probably going to be once more again <laughs> this week. But uh, that 12 and a half just seemed like a, a lot of points for a Michigan State team who has essentially played a close game every single yep. week. Uh, you know, yes, they're eight and one, but uh, their pass defense, like we had mentioned, has been brutal. If you just go back uh, two weeks ago in that uh, Michigan game, Michigan, who's not a very good passing team, was hitting deep balls all over to them, and until they tried to run a mesh point, uh, you know, run with the backup quarterback, everything was pretty solid for Michigan there. Uh, so I-, I think this is. Too much. I'm curious how Michigan State bounces back off that tough loss. Mm -hmm. And then they got the Ohio State game the next week to look into. So I think there's a recipe here for Maryland. Uh, But once again, I'm thoroughly ready to be disappointed and uh, look at my game score and see uh, 54 to uh, 20 (laughs) in that one with uh, four turnovers and probably 700 yards of offense for Maryland and wonder how the uh, that uh, really really sort of worked out but uh, I'm also curious to see how Michigan State bounce back from that uh, first loss you know uh, they've been teetering that line Mm -hmm. so much Uh, do they sort of come back uh, to probably where we thought they would be which would Probably be a six, well, seven, eight win team on this. Season. If there's anybody you're gonna, you know, uh, 
for Michigan State, if there's anybody you're going to flex your muscles on, yeah. it's going to be a Maryland. <laughs> yes, that's uh, true. But uh, I, I don't think they flex their muscles on anybody. Maybe Indiana. I, I don't remember if they played them, but everybody seems to have flexed their muscles on them uh, so far this year. Uh, we might get to that game in my uh, picks. I, I didn't think we were going to preview the uh, Rutgers-Indiana matchup uh, in our games of the week, but uh, it might come up later in our picks. All right, let's go to the other big one in the SEC. Texas A&M goes to Old Miss. Uh, A&M, uh, not pretty, but found a way in that Auburn game. Yeah. Uh, they sort of just controlled the ball, ran the ball, sort of found some passing lanes, and uh, let that defensive line, you know, create havoc here. A little bit of a different type game here at Old Miss. Uh, game day is going to be there, 7 o'clock start, so it'll be a tough game at night. I- I'm interested how you handicap this one because I, I – I, I want to really take Texas A&M here very, very badly. Uh, but, you know, I, I see A&M secondary. That causes me concern that Ole Miss can throw deep. But then I see Texas A&M's front four, and I'm like, I don't think Corral's going to have time yeah. to sit back there and hit those deep passes. So, Which he's been kind of off and on hurt And he's year. banged up. Yeah. He hasn't practiced for the last, you know, two weeks. He's played, uh, you know, you saw him in that Liberty game. He didn't look great. Uh, so I'm curious your take and how you see this one playing out here. Yeah, I think this is going to be a story of defenses, and I, I like A&M's defense a, a, a much better than Ole Miss, which I like a lot of defenses better than Ole Miss. <laughs> uh, can we say all the defenses <laughs> better than Ole Miss? But, uh, it might concern some that Malik Willis uh, couldn't uh, do much for us at defense, anyone who's thinking of making a first-round draft pick out of it. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. That was a horrible game. Uh Expected a lot more from Ole Miss and Liberty. Uh, but, no, I think A&M is uh, – they've really recovered their season well this year, yes. starting with that uh, that uh, win over Bama. So, um, you know, when it comes down to it between two teams, I'm going to trust defense and, and run game more than I am uh, air, air, air attack. So, I'm going to go with A&M and their defense here for sure. Yeah. Um, my question – if this gets into sort of a shootout and, uh, you know, A&M's front four isn't getting the pressure, can they still compete? Or would it be a, a little bit like the Mississippi State game where I, it becomes, you know, they just can't score with them? I think they'd have to stay turnover free in order to, to, to stay with them. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. In a shootout, you'd probably have to lean on this, especially them at home. But, you know... I don't think Ole Miss is going to stop anybody yes. anyway. So if you're right there with them, uh, yeah, it's a crapshoot. But I, I, I just don't know if Ole Miss is going to go up and down the field on A&M's defense. Yeah, uh, that, it's just sort of what you think that front four is going to do. Because mm-hmm. I, I think if they start rolling and getting to corral. It could get ugly. This quick. thing gets into blowout territory. And then if they can't, I just wonder if that A&M secondary can – you know, handle, uh, you know, that explosive plays of Ole Miss and be able to keep up scoring because they, even though they've won a lot of, they haven't shown really the ability to hit explosive plays. They're really, really, uh, you know, been conservative on yeah. offense. Uh, you know, even in that Alabama game, they scored points, but it was, you know, off kick returns and, you know, more Alabama mistakes than, you know, so much A and M and explosive offense. So interesting game. I I really want to take A and M, but I haven't quite, you know, pulled that trigger yet. Uh, so uh, we'll see how this one uh, mm-hmm. plays out. Especially road night in Old Miss. You know, uh, they'll be juiced up. So I, I think early on too. Uh, very important that A and M sort of just keeps it uh, calm and, and quiet, and then maybe in the second half start to dominate pull those fans out of that game uh, really, really quickly. All right, uh, we put this one in the games of the week, uh, mostly because I wanted to get your take on it because I I think I'm breaking every rule I have ever uh, taught you about gambling here in my picks. So Arizona State going up to Washington. Washington's coach is suspended. Probably not going to make it uh, uh, to uh, season three uh, of the Jimmy Lake era, I will say. There's a lot of Justin Wilcox uh, rumors floating around that uh, he's going to say sayonara to Cal, head up to Washington, which I I think would be a pretty good fit there. Uh, But Arizona State going up there, uh, never know quite what we're getting from Arizona State. Six on the road in Washington. What do you make of this game? How do you see it playing out? 
Well, it's quite the road trip, you know. Yes. You've, you've taught me those south southern teams going up north is always tricky. Well, I uh, think it's probably 85 in Tempe uh, today, and it's probably going to be uh, 50 and rainy in uh, Seattle. Yeah, so um, it really just, I think Arizona State completely controls the outcome of this game depending on which of their teams shows up. You know what you're going to get from Washington, uh, and, and they're going to give them a fight. Um, but if Arizona State's best offense shows up, they should be able to take care of business. But I, I'm going to stay away from this one. Yeah, uh, I, I can't seem to resist this, and everything about this number says don't do this. Uh, but I, I just feel like Washington's ready to fold in the tent here. Now, that being said, we got good Arizona State last week after the bad Arizona State who got beat by Washington State. Uh, so we might be due for bad Arizona State. But, uh, you know, that number six is ugly, but I think it's there to try to scare people off because I, I really think Washington's a, about to fold here and they just seem to be a, a complete mess. I, I don't know if they can talk Chris Peterson back into uh, re-resurrecting uh, Washington here or not. But, uh, yeah. Uh, this is probably not one of the real games of the week, but uh, I was curious on your point of view mm -hmm. since I'm pretty much going to break every gambling rule and uh, ride Arizona State here on a, on a field. All right, let's go to a, a sort of sneaky good game here. Uh, Notre Dame's at Virginia. Virginia still has a play in the ACC. This game doesn't uh, mean uh, much in the ACC standings, uh, but I think this is where we get that balance. Would you like to, you know, play and have a nice win over Notre Dame that uh, looks really, really fancy on the schedule? Or do you want to try to win that uh, ACC with Pitt and uh, coming up on your schedule? Uh, Armstrong's hurt for Virginia. Uh, it, it's sort of questionable where they'd play. Um, what do you think of this game here uh, versus Notre Dame? Uh, you know, I had Virginia on my picks here. Yeah. Uh, I think I took them off. Uh, just – Really unsure uh, if that number one offense shows up. I think uh, I think they can definitely compete with Notre Dame because Notre Dame has been very hot and cold offensively, uh, more cold than not. You know, not really scoring a whole lot of points. What we're used to uh, a Notre Dame team to get. So um, you know, but uh, if, if Virginia is missing their their best player, yeah. you know, it's it's really up in the air at that point. Um, but they still got a lot of weapons. They're a good team. Um, but I expect a lot of points to be scored in this one. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's the, that's the other thing. Even without Armstrong, who, you know, probably needs to play to win. They mm -hmm. they have options and weirdness at quarterback where yeah. they can sort of do odd things that they've sort of been doing all season long. You saw it in that uh, game versus BYU. Uh, he came out. They ran a couple different guys into weird stuff. So I think they'll be able to score. The question is, without him there as a steadying sort of force, can they score enough? Because I, I'm not sure they're going to have the defense here, uh, especially, you know, Notre Dame inconsistent on offense, mm -hmm. but they seem to have found their running game, uh, which, you know, sort of covers up a, a little bit of that. I would say Notre Dame probably can get to 35 pretty easy on Virginia since uh, everybody's gotten to at oh, least yeah. 35 on Virginia. So if they don't have the starting quarterback, can they sort of scheme and gimmick themselves into over 35 points? And once again, we get that uh, goofy five and a half mm -hmm. number, which, uh, you know, I don't really like. It's off key numbers of three. It's not near key numbers of seven. Uh, so I stay away from that. I look at the money line of 167 and try to talk yourselves into that. It probably ends up being a, a stay away, uh, you know, especially since I, I mentioned, you know, I don't know how much this game means to Virginia. Yeah, it looked great to have that Notre Dame, but it'd probably be even cooler to have a, a chance in the ACC oh, championship yeah. game and go into a big-time bowl game. Because if you uh, beat Notre Dame and then lose your next two games uh, to your rivals in the ACC that can – approach you in the uh you're playing in uh, a, a bad uh probably belk bowl uh you know uh, somewhere so it'll be interesting to see i think until you have a definite on the uh, quarterback mm -hmm. i'd stay away but uh overall I, I think it should be a at least a fun game virginia has had fun games uh, all season long uh we'll move to a interesting one i i don't think you can gamble on this one. <laughs> uh, Arkansas LSU. Uh, we got uh, some sort of great version of LSU last week. Uh, probably the version everyone thought they were going to get all season long. Yep. Um, 
But uh, Arkansas managed to win that game versus Mississippi State. Uh, I'm not 100% sold they deserve to win that game versus Mississippi <laughs> State, but uh, that's sort of uh, Arkansas's motto. We find a way to win. Six and three, Arkansas goes to LSU. Um, how are you handicapping this one? Because I have no clue, yeah. and it was a quick cross-off. Yeah, there's no answers to this one. You know, Both of these teams are so uh, bipolar that you have no idea what you're going to get here. Um you know, talent wise, you have to lean LSU. Uh, but are they going to get up for Arkansas the same way? Yeah. We Do we get for... back a dud LSU that we've had all season long, or the two times they've randomly played uh, yeah. hard and well, and uh, we get that? Because uh, going into LSU, that's a little, it's pretty difficult. A night game, mm-hmm. it's a prime timer, but, uh, you know, it seems like if Arkansas can get up on them early. Uh, they'll probably fold. I, I think that was the biggest thing in that, uh, you know, Alabama game. LSU got that quick score, got yep. up, gives them a little bit of life, and then they're ready to play. You know, if Arkansas pounds them, gets up, they probably fold. I, if it's hovering, maybe they go there. Uh, you know, Big Ed in that Alabama game seemed to uh, completely – uh, be careless of what's going on. So uh, maybe they just play uh, balls to the wall and uh, go for it these last handful of games. So I, I'm just a total stay away from this one. But I am interested how it plays out. Can Arkansas get to 7-3 and three on the season? And uh, can LSU uh, maybe wind up in a bowl game here? Yeah. Uh, so just an interesting game. But I, I think I just had stay away written mm-hmm. all over it. Definitely. All right, next up, North Carolina State goes to Wake Forest. Uh, Wake coming off that tough loss to North Carolina. Uh, up a nice margin there in the fourth quarter, yep. and just uh, defense couldn't quite uh, get one stop or, or any stops for well, that matter. They've been close to be getting burned yeah. all year with their defense, and they finally uh, they finally gave up just a little bit too much. Yes, uh, no run defense whatsoever. I think Ty Chandler ran for. Uh, like 250 yards. And That's correct. Two or three touchdowns. So. Yeah, I think he broke like three in the last like four minutes of the game. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, this is interesting here. Can Wake bounce back? Or d- yet, you know, it's a little bit like that Michigan State game now. Mm-hmm. Uh, totally different style. But, uh, you know, they, they rode that line for so long. It finally fell off. Can they get back up? And, uh, you know, start punishing teams. Because my guess is Wake Forest isn't going to stop scoring. Uh, But how bad does that defense break? What do we get from North Carolina State? Uh, Seven and two. They're right there in the hunt in Mm -hmm. the ACC. So what do you make of this game? Can Wake uh, pull this one out? Or does NC State uh, uh, win this one? Uh, Just because they probably can get maybe one or two stops on Wake Steve. Yeah, I think this is going to be another shootout, another back-and-forth game. But, I mean, hasn't every game Wake Forest yes. played this year has turned into a shootout? Um, so, I, you know, this was such a big loss last week for, for Wake. You know, they, they were like, hey, undefeated season, you know, winning out in the ACC, and then they just they got so deflated. I, it'll be interesting to see if they can bounce back. And North Carolina has been very up and down this year, too. Uh, every time I talk myself into taking North Carolina, they manage to find a, yes. a loss, and then I don't take them, and they find a win. So I'm staying away from this one, um, but really good indicator of what we'll see from Wake on the rest of the season because if they come out and lose this one, they're done. Yeah. Uh, a part of me wants to take Wake because this line's so low, and uh, I, I think we all know the history of North Carolina State going on road in big matchups. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I don't know if we're counting Wake as a big matchup. Is that a big road matchup? Th- that I don't know. I, you know, it's an eight and one Wake team. If this was Clemson and it was a, oh, yeah. you know, eight and one Clemson team, a uh, seven and two NC State game, we'd be, you know, hyping this game up. It's once again in the prime time slot at seven thirty. Um, you know, it's just really, really interesting. I was curious that this number was at sixty six and a half. So they, you know, the NC State defense. I don't want to call it good. Uh, but it's it's been a little bit feisty this year. Mm-hmm. Probably, I'd say one of the best units in the ACC. You got Clemson, and then maybe Virginia Tech and Q's and NC State. It's not a great crop to really uh, pick and choose from. So maybe they think this they can get the stops here. I, I'm curious to see that because you know every time you trust NC State, 
you, 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 you're usually very pretty uh, disappointed in yep. them. And, uh, you know, I do think the Wake team, you know, has resilience. So I, I do kind of like that number, but I don't know if I'm quite willing to grab it. I, I'm just, you know, it's hard when you see that defense just getting gashed for, you know, huge amount of yards. Now then you go on the other side and they gash, uh, you know, other teams uh, for huge amount of yards. It wasn't like North Carolina was shutting them down or anything Correct. in that game. All right, let's move on to the Big 12 and TCU Oklahoma State. Uh, Oklahoma State 13-point favorites of TCU. TCU coming off a nice win versus mm -hmm. Baylor. Yeah. Uh, can they do it again here? Uh, going into Stillwater, TCU, funny enough, won three of the last four in this matchup. Uh, makes you wonder why they fire Gary Patterson. <laughs> but uh, anyway, okay. Jerry kills there to uh, guide them to close out the season. But uh, TCU, Oklahoma State. Uh, you know, TCU's found their offense a little bit last week, and uh, – Oklahoma State's not really blowing out a whole lot no. of teams. Uh, 13 seems awfully large here. Uh, but, you know, if this was 13 two, three weeks ago, yeah, I'd been all over Oklahoma State. But TCU, I think, seems to be turning around just a little bit uh, with a really good win over a, you know, a Baylor team that we both really, really yes. like. Uh, so 13 seems a bit generous here, in my opinion. Yeah, um, I, I like the 13. And I'm just a little torn here because uh, Oklahoma State easily has the best defense in the Big 12. Yeah. So does that TCU offense uh, versus a Baylor team who, while it has a good defense, I don't, more an opportunity yes, I, I don't think any of us thought coming into the season we'd be talking about Baylor and their uh, mm -hmm. defense, uh, you know, and their eight and, uh, you know, uh, two record uh, overall. So I, I think. That's where you get a little bit. I think this line's inflated, but uh, I'm like, is this TCU offense going to come here uh, in Boone Pickett Stadium versus a real, real defense that they have to, you know, actually punish? Because I, I don't know if TCU's uh, defense is stopping anyone, especially not Oklahoma State's ground game, which has uh, been pretty consistent all season long. So that would be where I'd be a little bit nervous, and I sort of pulled away from TCU. I liked it going in, and then I'm just like, you know, I, I think this Oak State defense uh, – might be a little bit more of a, a pushback mm -hmm. uh, than that ba Baylor one that we saw coming forward. So I was a no-go on this, but I am very curious if TCU can sort of uh, find their way and uh, cause some trouble here for Oklahoma State. Uh, also might be a little bit of a look, look ahead for Oklahoma State because they have, you know, they're right there sitting in the Big 12. Probably will have to play uh, Oklahoma, you know, back-to-back -back for that mm -hmm. championship game. So maybe they're peeking at that not paying attention to this. Uh, you know, they sort of dropped the ball in that West Virginia game a little bit, uh, but able to find their way, got enough. West Virginia, uh, you know, quarterback play uh, is what it is, but uh, that's where I, I worry a little bit that that game plays out similar where, you know, Oklahoma State doesn't necessarily dominate, but yeah. they can't score on them and then – you get that cover, which, you know, you got in that West Virginia game there. All right, next up, out to the Mountain West. Interesting yeah, game here. Yeah, this is a good here. matchup here. Nevada, San Diego State. Nevada getting three here. I'm curious how you think this one will play out. You've been big on Nevada, but uh, as San Diego State season's played out, you, you've ridden them pretty tough all year long. So yeah. uh, what do you make of this one? Tough Nevada going into, uh, you know, San Diego. So, uh what do you think, Nevada, here? Knee-jerk reaction for me. I looked at it. I'm like, ooh, Nevada, getting three. Mm, yeah. I like it. But, you know, look at Nevada's schedule. Look at their losses. They've been tough games on the road against good defenses. Yeah. Uh, and San Diego State might just be the best defense they've played all year. Um, and it's on the road as well. So I, I actually almost want to lean San Diego State here because mm -hmm. I think uh, they're going to shut down this Nevada offense. And, uh, and and handle their business. So I actually I I like San Diego State here. I'm, I don't have a play. I'm going to stay away just because I have things I like on both of these yes. teams. Um, but uh, you know San Diego State's defense is nothing to scoff at. Yeah, you know uh, I, I went knee jerk, and then I looked at it, and you're right. Uh, all the things are saying Nevada bad on the road in these tight uh, defensive games. But I just want to believe Nevada's offense is going to hit its stride here. And, and we saw that San Diego State game. 
you know, versus Fresno, where once Fresno got out in front of them, San Diego State really, really sort of struggled mm-hmm. uh, to come back. So I think that's my sort of feel on this game. Maybe Nevada can jump on them, and then San Diego State struggled to get back. So I, I like that three, uh, but uh, I, you know, I, I'm more than willing to watch, you know, Nevada who went up to Fresno State and uh, couldn't quite, uh, you know, cross that barrier uh, and uh, went into Kansas State, couldn't quite cross that barrier. That's where they've struggled. Uh, so I'm really curious how this plays out, but I, I'm a little bullish on Nevada here, thinking they, they might steal this one here versus San Diego State, and uh, we'll see how that one plays out. I, I'm curious. That, it's going to be a good game yeah. that late night. The thing is That's also that watch. Nevada's offense hasn't been, I think, as good as we both thought it was going to be yeah. at the start of the season. It's been good, but I think we were thinking it was going to be one of those top-tier offenses, and it, it's just sort of been a middle-of-the-pack solid mm-hmm. offense, and it struggled, uh, like you mentioned, versus, uh, you know, good defenses. And then we go to this one, Utah State, San Jose State. Sneaky 7-2, uh, Utah State. I don't think anyone knows this, but uh, the leader in the Mountain West is Utah State. Their only <laughs> loss is to Boise State. So, uh this one is interesting to me. I, I'm going to play the opposite side of things. San Jose State getting a lot of, you know, they were beat up by a lot of injury here. Just played Nevada close last yes, week, I believe. they did. Uh, they're healthier. Uh, you know, Utah State somehow has finagled their way into a very good season, and I think they're much better uh, than people, you know, yeah. uh, sort of thought at the beginning of the year. It's a little bit of a Baylor situation. you you know, you read all the preseason magazines, and this team has nothing. They aren't going to be any good. And then they get a couple wins to start the season. You're like, eh, probably fluky. But And then they lose that Boise State game, and you're like, oh, see? But then after that Boise State game, they started winning again. So, uh, you know, I, I've ridden Utah State pretty good here. So I think I have a good feel on them. So I'm feeling San Jose State here. Mm-hmm. Uh, the number was a little bit more than I thought it, it would be here. Uh, you know, I, I think Utah State's been disrespected all season long. Uh, but uh, I'm curious how you think of this one. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I'm not, I'm not as big of a fan of San Jose State as yeah. you are, apparently. Uh, I just... Constantly, week in, week out, they're not getting yeah, getting it done. They disappoint. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but they have, you know, like I said, they played they played Nevada close. They've had a lot of close yes. losses, uh, so they've been right there. Uh, and Utah State's a bit of a surprise, but uh, I, I just don't know here. I, I don't have a play here at all. Yeah, uh, this was just more a, a feel that uh, maybe this Utah State comes back. I I think uh, if we win in the preseason, we were all hyped up on San Jose State all down on Utah State, and it's totally flipped, and, and it's sort of gone back to the norm mm-hmm. of uh, college football life where Utah State, always a good, solid program. San Jose State, mediocre uh, to poor. But, uh, you know, I, I the number is bad. I, I will admit that. But I, I just sort of have a feel in this one that maybe Utah State might drop it, or maybe Utah State just wins out the rest of the year and uh, ends up in the Mountain West <laughs> title game. Uh, probably should uh, go back in time and put a little money on that because I think they were the second lowest. To, uh, yeah. Maybe UNLV in New Mexico. I Possibly lower than New Mexico, as I try to remember. So uh, I, I think they were very, very yeah, far down, down, there. The, down there. All right, uh, last one in the Pac-12. Washington State goes to Oregon. This is an interesting game to me. Uh, you were talking to me about it earlier, and I brushed it off. Then I started looking at, uh, you know, Washington State has continued to play pretty good football since the coach has been out. Uh, Oregon does sort of what Oregon does. They win football games. Never pretty, never big. Yeah. And I think that's where this 14 number, uh, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't think Mario Cristobal probably has won a game by 14-plus points in his whole career. Uh, so I'm a little nervous about that Then I'm nervous about next week. Oregon at Utah, really big game. Are they looking ahead to that one? Does this one sneak up on them? I don't, I, I don't think so. I think the name of the game is the spread, yes. uh, like you said. I think Oregon... You know they're feeling that pressure. They're up to number three now in, yes. in, in the playoff standing. So uh, they know with any loss that they're done as far as the playoff hopes go. Uh, but this one being in Eugene, I don't think they're going to drop this one to Washington State. Now fourteen is an awful lot. I'm with you there. I think Washington State's a good play plus fourteen, um, but uh, no chance for upset here. Now moving forward, 
uh, on the road. Well, I think we all already have our money on Utah for next week. Uh, I don't know if Oregon can can ride this out the rest of the yes. year, but I don't think this week is going to be the week they drop one. Yeah, I, I, I don't think they drop this one, but that 14 just uh, yeah, seemed definitely. very, very large for a team who really hasn't shown the ability to win by 14 points all season long. And, uh, you know, uh, I could use a blowout, so we might could get something where uh, I, I pretty much guarantee Utah is probably going to be favored in that game next week. I, I I don't see a way where they really put Oregon, you know, on top going in. Well, and Oregon still has at the end of the year yes. at Oregon State. Too, yes, correct? Uh, that's correct. Uh, and probably another matchup with Utah in the Pac-12 championship yeah. game. So, you know, if they do end up winning out two wins over Utah, win over Washington State, win over Oregon State, uh, I, I'd put them in that playoff, especially with the road win still over Ohio State. But uh, this one will be an interesting one. Like the spread, I don't think they blow this one. Uh, you know, next week's a, a different story. But uh, those are our games of the week. Let's get into our picks. Last week, good week for you. Five yep. and three. Put you over 500 on the season. All right. 63, 61, and two. Hit a good parlay, too. You did hit a good parlay. Yeah, uh, one you had already given up on for the aforementioned uh, <laughs> Oregon Ducks yep. uh, uh, playing in probably the closest game <laughs> other than the A&M Auburn game of the week. But uh, they managed to finagle their way into a seven-point-plus victory there. So 5-3, uh, and 63-61-2. and two. Close out the season well. You go over 500. I was back on track after a 4-7 and seven week in Week 9. 7-4-1 and one for me in that week. 64-59-3. and three. So we're both just nudging ahead of that trial of 500 mark. We can push these last couple weeks and uh, have a good overall season. It's certainly been much better the second half than the first half, I think, for both of us. Oh, yes. All right. Let's get into our picks this week. I got a whole lot of them. Yeah. Uh, you're in the medium range for us, so yeah. I'll start us off. The aforementioned Penn State plus one over Michigan. I'm writing the history of this and uh, taking Penn State at home as they've dominated Michigan. Well, I'll go ahead and throw mine out there as well. I've got Michigan minus the one. Oh, my. What Uh, sort of dark world are we in where you're taking Michigan as a a road favorite, uh, though a small one? That's basically a pick (laughs) game. And uh, I just think they're more talented than Penn State. Yeah, I I recall days of you giving me grief for wearing Michigan shirts and uh, (laughs) What has Jim Harbaugh ever done? And now you're riding him on the road in Penn I, State. Yeah, I am. <laughs> All right, next up for me, we uh, I, I mentioned it, but uh, I'm going back on the Scarlet Knight train here. Yes, last week. You can't week. give up on Shiano, can you? Well, uh, hey, he's been pretty handy. Four wins. Four wins. They're two away from a bowl game. They have this one, and they have a Maryland one to close out the year. So uh, I, I think they have one versus... Uh, Maybe a Penn State or something like that. That probably already uh, I've marked off the schedule. But uh, two wins away from a bowl. Indiana this week, plus seven. They tend to dominate uh, these games versus the uh, uh, dregs of the Big Ten. Of, of the dregs, I think they are the king of the dregs. So they win this one. They win the Maryland game. They're going bowling. I think they put a lot into this game. Uh, Indiana has been brutal. Uh, all year long, uh, minus seven. Just, I think this is more a play against uh, why Indiana would be seven point favorites over literally anyone. Uh, so, going Rutgers plus seven for me. All right, next up, I'm going to take Marshall minus four and a half at oh home my. versus UAB. I have, you know, I was big on this Marshall. I know. Team I was going to say you haven't been on the and, Marshall uh, bandwagon. I've stayed away a from them for a long time, but you know, I look at last year's matchup of this game where. Uh, Marshall really dominated that whole game and managed to lose, and uh, I think that was for the conference yes. last year. Uh, so there, there's going to be a revenge factor here, and this being at home, and UAB's really been kind of a disappointment this year. Uh, Marshall's, you know, been a little bit of a disappointment, yeah. but I think uh, I think Marshall's going to win this one big at home. Yeah, next up for me, I'm going Memphis minus 5.5 versus East Carolina. Going back to that well there uh, last week, got him versus uh, SMU. Uh, just find it interesting that Memphis has been so low, you know, favorited at home yeah. when they've dominated at home for the last, you know, uh, I don't know, since Winter has been there, yeah. he might be going back at some point. Uh, but, you know, five and a half at home versus East Carolina, who's, you know, played better, but I, I don't think played 
uh, of style football where they go into Memphis and, and win. So uh, five and a half for me versus uh, East Carolina. Memphis seemed to get back on track last week. Yep. You know, they, they had that little dip in the season, but uh, easy win versus SMU last week. So I think they get back on track, minus five and a half versus East Carolina. Yeah, I'm jumping on board with you there on the Memphis train. I've got Memphis minus six, so a, l- a little bit. Uh, not quite as good a point spread yes. as you there, but it's still, I think it's going to be over a touchdown here. Uh, yeah. Memphis plays really good at home, so I'm joining you there. Yeah, definitely. So next up for me, I'm going to take uh, Central Florida plus seven and a half versus SMU. Uh, you know, we, we, it's a little like Memphis. Uh, you know, Dylan Gabriel got hurt. We, we sort of forgot about Central Florida, and then uh, you look up, they're six and three. They're, you know, three wins to close out the season to be nine and three on the season. So, yep. uh, you know, I, I think SMU probably dipping now, and I, I just think this will be a tight game there. Seven and a half points for Central Florida. Um, I, I just like that number there. So Central Florida plus seven and a half. Okay, I'm going to go the first of one of my big underdog, big large point spreads. I'm going to take Purdue minus the 20 and a half. We talked about it. We think that's an inflated number. I'm going to take the 20 and a half at Ohio State. Well, I'm with you there. I'm taking Purdue plus 20 and a half as well. So we're both on the Purdue bandwagon, which probably means they lose 45 to 13. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, next up for me, uh, I'm going with Duke plus 11 and a half here versus Virginia Tech. Uh, what I saw from Virginia Tech last week uh, looked like a team that had uh, pretty much uh, quit on the season and is uh, looking forward to uh, not playing any more football. So, uh, yes, Duke has been bad, but uh, they at least try every week. Uh, I, I don't think Virginia Tech is trying anymore. Uh, maybe the defense a little bit, but the I, offense is certainly not. I wanted to pull the trigger on that one, uh, but, but then I looked, watched Duke I looked back at the scores <laughs> of the Duke games and uh, – I couldn't quite do it. Uh, they've had a couple of goose eggs, I think, this year, yes. a seven spot against a couple teams. So I think they struggle to find points at times. They do have a win over Northwestern. Oh, big <laughs> big powerhouse <laughs> Northwestern. Uh, but, no, I, I, I couldn't quite pull the trigger yeah. on this one. Uh, uh, I'm going to go with another 20-and-a-half point underdog, my Vols, Tennessee. I, I hope we have a close one here. I think we're going to have a close one. Uh, not getting my hopes up too much for an upset, but we'll see how fired up I am come 3.30 Saturday. Uh, but, yeah, taking the 20 and a half. Yeah, uh, next up for me, I'm going Boston College plus one and a half. Uh, quarterback's back. Uh, it, it wasn't pretty last week, but, uh, you know, I, I think he finds his rhythm a little bit more this uh, this uh, week. And, uh, you know, I think Boston College might close out the season pretty, pretty good and then yeah. uh, get in a crappy bowl game and win their bowl game uh, per every Boston College season. I think since the beginning of time, <laughs> start out okay, dip, close out okay, win your bowl game, and uh, everyone's sort of uh, happy in Boston. Uh, but one and a half versus Georgia Tech, tough loss last week to Miami. Uh, I think they're dipping. Boston College is rising there, especially with a quarterback back. Uh, you know, if he closes out the season pretty well, he would be the one I'd look at uh, NFL draft wise yes, as the one I think could We've actually both, be you know, talked about him. yeah uh, uh, an actual NFL uh, level quarterback. But uh, yeah, Boston College plus one and a half for me. Uh, next up, I'm going to take the Mississippi State minus five and a half. That's another one that uh, you've been riding for a few yes. weeks. I'm jumping on board. I'm going to cash in some there. Uh, going to be a close game. I like getting five and a half here. Yeah. Next up for me, the Well, Maryland. Twelve and a half. We are going back. I, I think I'm going to do all our uh, overall picks on the whole season at some point, and uh, we'll see how many times I have taken Maryland this year. I feel like it's every week, and uh, I, I think I've covered twice <laughs> with them, but uh, maybe once. Uh, Maryland, plus 12 and a half versus Michigan State. I think Maryland will be able to throw on them. If they can control the turnovers, uh, I think we get a shootout game, cover this uh, 12 and a half here. I'm curious to see how Michigan State bounces back. Uh, I'm going to take Texas A&M, minus three at Ole Miss. Oh, he's going with it. Yeah. Uh, next up for me, I rode them last week to their first victory. I'm riding them for victory number two. UNLV, plus three at home versus Hawaii. Hawaii on the road this week after being at home last week, coming to Vegas. Uh, the Hawaiians will be living it up in the city of sin there. I like UNLV. Two straight road wins in the famed major league. That's a winning streak. <laughs> Next up, 
A team I've, I've liked this year, uh, they haven't quite got as many wins as uh, I've hoped, but I'm going to take Texas State minus the two and a half versus Georgia Southern. I think this is a bad Georgia Southern team, and I, I like Texas State. They're sneaky, <laughs> sneaky. <laughs> All right, uh, next up for me, I'm breaking my gambling rules and taking Arizona State. Oof. Road favorite in a totally different uh, road environment than uh, what they're used to, but uh, I, I'm wagering on Washington quitting. Uh, so I got two quitters, Virginia Tech and Washington. Hopefully that works out. Uh, otherwise, we're going to have a, a not a fun week, but uh, Arizona State minus six for me. Next up, it's a team that I've liked a lot of the year. I've taken them as dogs. Uh, I took against them last week when they went up against my Roadrunners, but I'm back on the UTEP minor train All again right. today. Uh, I'm going to take them minus one and a half at North Texas. All right. Battle for North and South Texas. Control of the state uh, goes in that one. <laughs> uh, next up for me, Washington State uh, plus a 14 versus Oregon. We already talked about that one. I just think that's too many points. Oregon doesn't tend to win by 14 points uh, no matter what. <laughs> they're playing. Uh, last up for me, I'm going to take Louisiana and the Raging Cajuns. Minus six at Troy. This is a bad Troy team. Uh, very inconsistent. Yeah. I, I like Louisiana here. All right. I got two more left. We're going San Jose State minus the four and a half versus Utah State. Breaking more gambling rules uh, all season long. Trust the team that's been good all season long. Don't trust the one that isn't and then take them as a favored. But uh, I, I just, I got a feel that San Jose State's starting to get sort of their play players back uh starkle's fully healthy might be able to you know pull the trigger here on this utah state uh team and then lastly i'm going with nevada plus the three uh versus san diego state so those are our picks action-packed weekend we'll yep. be sure to be back on monday for a recap and review be sure to like and subscribe don't miss winning daily got a lot of college basketball coming up our man dynamite david going to start to flow into college basketball. We should have our college basketball preview out in, uh, you know, a, a week's time or so. You yeah, know, but we we've definitely got some action yes. on these early season games as yes. well. Yes, uh, have, I've had bad action. But, uh, <laughs> you've been a little bit better than I have. Uh, so, yeah, catching up on the college basketball. We'll have our preview out. Be sure to follow us so you don't miss our NFL preview. we got our picks and preview of Week 9. Big win for the Tennessee Titans and the Tighten Dynamite. Up. He's pumped up. Best team in the NFL right now other than maybe Arizona who somehow managed to win with Colt McCoy and uh, James Conner as uh, the <laughs> dominant duo. But uh, like, subscribe. That's our show, and we're out. Green Lake Network presents Football Time.